All right. Good evening. Welcome to the first Futures Watch meeting of 2024. I hope your holidays were merry and bright, and we're all looking forward to a uh, hopefully a well. It's going to be a pretty tumultuous 2024, but we'll get through it, right? Um, I'm Maria Mark. I'm the president of Futures Watch. Is this too loud? No. Nope. Uh, I'm the president of Beaches Watch, and I will be your host for tonight's meeting. Um, as you saw, we are going to be um, honored to have all three Beaches mayors here tonight to give us a state of the Beaches report. Um, this is one of our most popular meetings, as you can tell by the attendance, so thank you all for coming out. Um, before we start our meeting, uh, we have to kind of start on a solemn note. We had one of our newest board members that was actually supposed to start with us this year. Um, this was in his first meeting as an official board member. He suddenly passed away on Christmas Day. And it was Leo Hearn Jr. I don't know if, if you guys know him. He's been very active in the community as well as in Jacksonville. Um, as I said, it was very sudden. He had actually started working with our programs committee um, before becoming a member. And uh, we were really looking forward to his, he, he already made some major contributions just in the short time of working with our organization. So um, we were very sad to hear about his passing. Um, they are, his family is hosting his uh, celebration of life on Saturday the 13th. And it will be in the, um, I don't think it's a community center, but it's building in Jarbo Park Community Center, thank you, um, from 9 to 11. And then I think um, his daughter is hosting a reception after that, if you want to join. So just, uh, I think we have just a, just a moment of silence to remember him and his family. So we will begin with some brief announcements before we get into the program. Um, we always videotape our meetings, so if you uh, can share this with your friends and neighbors that were not able to attend, uh, it will be on our website and our YouTube channel tomorrow. Our YouTube channel is Beaches Watch 2012. Um, we are started kicking off our membership for 2024, so if you have not joined us or renewed your membership, the lovely lady sitting at the back of the table will be glad to take your money tonight. Or you can go on our website and, uh, and join online. Uh, it's $15 for individual, $20 for family, and $5 for students. The memberships are valid uh, January through December. And this year we're hosting a member social in March in lieu of our meeting. So this will be our first time holding our social um, since COVID. And so we're really excited about that. More details of that will come. We will be celebrating our 20th anniversary, which officially is the 28th of this month. So, 20 years. And that gives me a chance to just do a shout out to our community for all the support that you guys have given our organization. Recognition of elected officials. We have a full house, as you can imagine, which is great, great to see. So we obviously have our honored guests, Chris Hoffman, Mayor of Jacks Beach, Curtis Ford, Mayor of Atlantic Beach, and Elaine Brown, Mayor of Neptune Beach. Yay, good to see you, Elaine. Uh, Candace Kelly from uh, Atlantic Beach City Commission. Nice to see you, Kelly. Uh, Candace, I'm sorry. Tracy Gabot is... Um, Tracy. Okay. And Sandy Golden from Jack's Beach City Council. We have Carrie Chen, uh, Neptune Beach, Mayor Pro Tem. He's in the back. Uh, and then we also have a special guest. Uh, this is uh, the aide to Representative Michael. It's Kathy Posey. She's joining us tonight, so welcome. Appreciate that. Uh, we do have a number of city officials here. Um, I will not try and name everyone, but we do appreciate your support in coming out for the, for the meeting. Did I miss anyone, an elected official? Okay. Uh, let's see. So, 
City offices, Martin Luther King's coming up on Monday, uh, so the city offices will be closed. Uh, the meeting date has been changed for Jacksonville Beach and Neptune Beach to Tuesday, January 16th. Um, Neptune Beach will be hosting a Penman Road open house and special workshop. That's coming up on Tuesday the 16th as well, and that will start at 5 o'clock. Uh, they will have a host presentation by the city of Jacksonville, and public comment begins at 6. Oh, and later, sorry, there's some flyers on the back table, so if you'll grab one on your way out. Um, obviously, Pittman Road is a major, major topic, um, so the city officials really want your input, um, and good or bad or indifferent, but it is very important that we get everyone's input on this. Candace. I think we should add to the list the uh, Martin Luther Day uh, celebration, and that's going to be on Saturday, starting at 11 p.m. At the uh, the show, the band show thing. What is that called? See what we're doing. See what we're doing. Yeah. Usually the music is glorious. You should you should come and celebrate. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Atlanta Beach will be hosting a town hall on Saturday, January twentieth at ten. This will be in the chambers. Um, the Atlantic Beach Charter Review Committee will meet on Wednesday, January 24th, and that will also be in the chambers. Uh, Jack's Beach Comprehensive Plan Workshop will be Wednesday, January 24th, and that will be in the Jacksonville Beach uh, Council Chambers. Uh, Atlantic Beach is hosting a priority setting meeting on Monday, January 29th at 5.30, and that will be in the chambers. Excuse me, Maria, that meeting is postponed until February. Oh, okay. So scratch that meeting for right now, and uh, as soon as you reschedule to a firm date, it will be on our calendar, on our website. Um, our upcoming meeting in February will be um, the 2024 Legislative Session Update. Uh, this is a, an annual meeting that we host. Scott Dudley from the uh, Florida, Cico, Florida League of Cities. Uh, he is the Director of Field Advocacy. He does a great job um, talking about what is going on in the legislature, um, different bills that would affect us as a beach community. And Sandy has her hand raised, yes? <laughs> I just want to say that the state um, is attacking our home rule this year. Yeah. Worse than they, than they have in the past. So I encourage you to come to this meeting next month because Scott will tell you about all the legislation um, very honestly, and um, hopefully you will come and learn more about it and then be a part of contacting our legislators. Thank you. And for those of you who don't know who the Florida League of Cities is, it's, um, it's our adv advocacy group in Tallahassee. They really work to make sure we maintain home rule for our municipalities. Um, and they work tirelessly throughout the year, um, you know, talking to the different elected officials and representatives up and down the state and try to, um, I guess, I wouldn't say compromise, but try to find the best solutions for, for us. Um, as you know, our, they get into Tallahassee and they try to do a one-size-fits-all and that doesn't work, as we know, because we're all individual cities and municipalities. Our, our local elected officials know us best because they live and work and you know, thrive here. So the League of Cities, really, they're on our side, and they're on our local elected official side. Um, so I would encourage you to please try and come and uh, come to that session in February. And just by showing hands real quickly, we'd like to kind of know how you guys have heard about our meetings. So, um, just raise your hand, was it by Nextdoor, that app that people can sign up for and you can chit-chat about different things? Nobody knows that app. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it? Okay. Uh, Facebook? All right. Uh, newsletter? Yay, team, you actually read a newsletter. Uh, newspaper, Beaches Leader always, almost always, uh, oh. puts our, our uh, our announcement, our website, just going on our website. Nice, nice. And just friends, neighbors, word of mouth. Wow, that's great. You actually 
should talk to your friends and neighbors. <laughs>
That's the makeup of the council. I did want to um, introduce, if you don't already know, Mike Stephopoulos, our city manager. He is celebrating five years with Jacksonville Beach this month. are actually working on um, finalizing a contract with a new city attorney. So we're really excited about that. We've got a, a great person um, joining the staff there that you will hear about later. A couple of um, new things that have happened over the past year. Um, Spring Hill Suites is open and very busy. They're doing great. The Oaxaca Club and Jekyll Brewing, and not mentioned here, um, but the second floor of Oaxaca Club is a private event space, and that is open and available for rental. and. The view, as you can imagine, is phenomenal. So it's a really, really beautiful development there. They're also um, a pilot program for outdoor dining on city right away. So you can see where the kind of planters are there. They can have tables and chairs right up to the street. So it's a really great addition to Jack's Beach, Caddy Corner from City Hall, and it's, it's doing great. Um, Parlor Donuts is unfortunately really close to my office. <laughs> I can see it from the museum window, so uh, that's not good for anyone, uh, but they seem to be doing doing great. So this, that's just a couple of the, of the new things that have come up in Jackson Beach over the past year. We are hard at work on Gonzales Park. A lot of you who are surrounding in that surrounding neighborhood have been involved in some community, community meetings and surveys that we've done. Um, we really wanted to make this a community park, um, not a destination park like Sunshine Park in the South Beach Park area. Um, one of the things that has kind of slowed us down but that people seem really excited about is pickleball. Um, I'm thrilled. It's, a, it's all the rage. I don't get it. Everyone tells me I need to play it, and maybe one day I will. Um, I, I might just keep, stomp my feet. Um, it's not even done yet, and people are setting up like temporary nets, like portable nets, and they're going ahead and playing pickleball on the new on the new courts there. So I think that's going to be uh, a really busy and well used um, park, which is exactly what we want it to be. Um, we're adding some uh, um, golf cart, low speed vehicle parking, bike racks, all of that good stuff. So that's going to be a great. There's the pickleball courts. This is what it looked like when people were out there playing. Yeah. I'm not even kidding. We have a lot of public art, especially in our downtown area. We have a public art committee um, that has been looking for locations for public art and as well as evaluating. They've done call for artists for a couple of different projects. You may have already seen the sea turtle on the side of our um, Cape building there at 4th and 2nd. This is actually behind the um, Seawalk Pavilion. Um, so when you're out there on Martin, for the Martin Luther King Day event, you can walk around to the back and see this beautiful um, mural. And then they even went kind of around to the side where that, I think that's a dolphin up there on the top right, um, goes around to the side so you can see that from, from the beach side. And more to come there, which is great. Um, also coming soon, I feel like I was going to get this question because I get this question every time I leave my house, Beach Bowl, we don't have an opening date on it. <laughs> Um, but they have a beautiful mural behind Beach Bowl too that is a really beautiful sea turtle. So we're excited to see, uh, especially kind of that embracing the beach life that we have here with our public art. Um, some really fun things that we're working on, and you saw the announcement of the, um, the council workshop. Um, we've been in land development code review and revision for a year and we're working now on the comprehensive plan. So since implemented, there hasn't been a comprehensive review of those documents. So we have um, Kimberly Horn, they've had a consultant that is helping us with this. We've had several workshops with our city board, citizen groups, businesses, city council. So they've really um, kept, kept their kind of um, thumb on the pulse of things. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing that. Um, urban trails, so exciting. <laughs> Everyone's okay. Um, but this has been met with mixed reviews, and I think you're going to probably hear a lot more about it, but I can tell you the concept of urban trails is to help connect our community where people can ride their bike, walk, basically get from point A to point B safely and not in a car. So we've been working on this. We've had several um, workshops. We brought in a consultant from Gainesville who, who does this, and they know how to kind of retrofit fit an urban trail concept into a built community. Um, so we are working on that. We've had some um, robust feedback, and <laughs> we had a really good meeting on uh, Monday, a city council briefing. 
Um, and the City Council had an opportunity to digest some of that feedback and provide some thoughts and comments to um, to our city staff. So again, more to come on that, but I think um, yes, we want the community to be excited about that. So that's what I'm working towards. Dune walkovers. Um, along the line, we're doing a lot of dune walkovers. You'll see that coming. Um, in addition to that, we just found out today, I'm just still, this is the advantage of going first. Um, Kevin Bodge, who's here, um, kind of gave us the heads up that uh, we have received 100% federal funding for the beach renourishment that's going to be starting in March. So that's really exciting. That's really exciting, and um, we'll we'll see that um, start to come, and you'll you'll see announcements and everything on uh, where that's going to impact. It looks like it's going from north to south, though. So, Mike, I know that was something you were curious about. So, um, the beach uh, walkovers are they're a big project, so you're going to see a lot of activity um, with those. And the list of the walkovers that we're doing is available on our website. This is a huge project. Um, one of our, this is a, a massive multi-year downtown redevelopment project, but this is going to be uh, working on drainage sewer lines, repaving, striping, on-street parking, um, and it's just kind of working its way down um, from downtown towards the south end of the beach. I actually spent some time on the project website for this, and it's really good. So if you live in this area or if you're impacted by this project, you may want to go on there. You can drill down to your house and see exactly what's going to be happening now in front of it. So um, it's a really well done, and the estimated timelines. So I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to construction timelines recently, but you can pretty much throw them out the window. Um, but at least it gives you kind of a ballpark of the chronology of when things are going to be happening. We all know Deck of the Chairs, we know that image, they celebrated their 11th season this year. I thought it was the best ever, I say that every year. I had met someone who was like, I was so disappointed, it just wasn't as good. I'm like, I don't know what event you were, you were at, but I thought it was great. He did a great job, they did a great job with the add-on programming of the Gator Bowl Pep Rally, Tuba Christmas, all of that. Um, we've already set our Moonlight movie, so we've got some fun ones coming up. If you haven't been to a Moonlight movie, I do Mare's movie trivia ahead of time, so there's great prizes. Uh, it's always about the movie or whatever the topic is. And then we're adding, one of the things the council asked um, of our Parks and Rec and Special Events staff was to activate the Seawalk Pavilion and Latham Plaza area during non-event times. And one of the things we're going to be doing is adding an acoustic night to the first Wednesday of the month. And we are going to be trying out a country music festival. So, <laughs> all right. Are you wearing cowboy boots right now? Because <laughs> I know beach people got to take off their flip flops, put on their cowboy boots. Um, cowboy boots not mandatory, but um, Windward Marina. I, how am I doing on time? You did start counting, didn't you? Um, this is a huge project. Uh, a couple of points on that is also very complicated. This is the area where um, you may know it as Beach Marine. On one side, the far side is the only boat ramp in Jacksonville Beach, which is owned by the city of Jacksonville, and Second Avenue is also owned by the city of Jacksonville. So there's Windward Marina, the city of Jacksonville Beach, and the city of Jacksonville all own property out there. So that's part of what made it so complicated. Long story short, a lot of land is going to be turned into conservation land and is going to be owned, given to the city of Jacksonville to operate as a passive park. So there's going to be some additional wetlands up there that are preserved. There's going to be an additional commercial pad that is out there by um, on the other side by the boat ramp. And then all of the area that, that Windward Marina owns is going to be brought together under one PUD. So that's going to make things hopefully a lot more simple going forward. We also put uh, mixed marina mixed use as a new future land use category in our 2030 comprehensive plan. Hopefully I didn't make that more confusing. Citizen involvement. Has anybody been to Citizen Police Academy? That is not enough of you. It is a great program. I highly, highly recommend it. The next class is going to be class 50. So it's going to be all the bells and whistles. They're going to um, go, go uh, all out with that one. So it's a really, really great experience. You, don't have, you do not have to live in Jacksonville Beach to take advantage of that program. And the Citizen Information Academy, I think we're going to be doing our third class this spring. Um, anybody do Citizen Information Academy? 
Okay, even more than Citizen Police Academy. That's great. Um, it's relatively new. You learn about the functions of, of the city, the municipal government, and I. Um, you don't get to shoot a gun like you do in the Citizen Police Academy, but you get to go to the police water treatment plant. So it's basically the same thing. <laughs> We have city boards um, that are, we have a great list of candidates. We're always looking for new people to step up and get involved serving on those boards. Um, I'm almost out of time, but you've already heard uh, this legislative session. We thought it couldn't get worse. It's just like deck the chairs. I didn't think it could get better. Legislative session, I didn't think it could get worse, and somehow it has. Um, so we please come to the February 7th event and keep an eye out on any calls to action because there, this is a full-on attack on, uh, on home rule and your local governance. Um, please follow us on all of these different social media um, platforms and pull out your phone right now, pull open the camera. We all know how to do this now because we had to do it in restaurants during COVID. I have 30 seconds left. I will use it. Pull out your camera, scan this QR code, and sign up for our newsletter. This is a monthly newsletter, we will not spam you, and this is going to give you every month updates on projects, what's opening, what you can do to get involved, special events that we have, um, you name it, you will find it in this newsletter. So I know we're taking questions at the end, so I look forward to hearing what you guys are curious about. Thank you for your time.
tell you if you're from Atlanta Beach. Let me see a show of hands again, Atlanta Beach. So if you have not met your city manager, you need to. He is a real gem. Uh, he is uh, just so professional, and he spent uh, quite a bit of time in the city of Jacksonville uh, in the planning as planning director. And uh, prior to that, uh, or somewhere in that uh, uh, sequence, he was with the state of Florida. So we're very fortunate to have uh, Bill Killingsworth at the helm. <laughs> Uh, and this is uh, my first uh, big thing I just want to acknowledge, yeah, because it's very, very infrequent that uh, you have a reduction in millage rate in, uh, for ad valorem taxes. We actually had uh, a reduction the previous year, and then this past year we did a rollback. Uh, and I'm proud to say that a couple of things. One is that we had no loss of services in doing this, uh, but it was wholly appropriate. Uh, if you live in Atlantic Beach, you're aware of the fact that uh, your property values uh, year over year rose significantly, and so it, I thought it was appropriate. The commission agreed with me, and we approved a rollback. And for those of you who are not clear on that, a rollback is actually that millage rate, which is revenue neutral year over year. So we still were getting the same revenues, we just weren't increasing them because your property taxes went up, and you, you got the increase there. And then, quite frankly, we still actually had an increase in ad valorem taxes because. All of the new construction on the knockdown rebuilds, the redevelopment, uh, and all the remodels, uh, those are taxed uh, at market value. So, uh, so we are in a very good position there. Uh, so back to engaged citizens, uh, we, had, uh, we established the uh, Charter Review Committee. This is very important by, by charter. Um, it was uh, time to uh, review the charter for changes. Uh, that uh, team has been working uh, tirelessly and in the next couple of months we'll have recommendations to the city commission on what will ultimately and hopefully uh, result in a, uh, a referendum on the November ballot for changes to the uh, city charter. Uh, we established the safety, traffic, and parking committee. Uh, this committee is, is very important because there's so many things that need to be looked at as far as you know, times change, and, and what was good 20, 30 years ago is not the same today. So parking issues, uh, speeds, uh, uh, calming uh, uh, devices, and uh, things like that, but uh, all of the things that go into traffic and safety, and uh, we're uh, embarking on a study uh, very shortly uh, that we're using an outside consultant to put together for uh, traffic and safety, and uh, this committee will actually be the liaison with them or the the oversight uh, to, to work hand in hand. So looking forward to that. Uh, and then uh, one that we have been pretty diligent on but hadn't really re uh, reviewed for several years is the parks master plan. Uh, and that's what's coming up in our uh, uh, meeting two Saturdays from now uh, is uh, the, I, I think this will probably be about the last meeting on the uh, review of the parks master plan. But what's going to be nice out of this uh, meeting is we're going to deliver the results of our uh, our survey that we did, uh, it was a survey monkey, I think, uh, that we did, and, and asked the citizens for their input. So, very excited to hear what our citizens have to say on that. Uh, and then, uh, finally, uh, Complete Streets. Uh, we have worked on uh, uh, a number of things around Complete Streets. Right now, our, our project uh, directly in front of us, and, and this really affects uh, Neptune Beach and all of the beaches, is what we're doing on Ahern Street. So it's that little segment of uh, Ahern Street right behind Ragtime and the, and the parking that's to the rear of that center and, and Caddy Corner adjacent to the new building going up at 42 East Coast. Uh, but we are, are going to redo that uh, segment. Uh, we're going to put in multi-use paths, uh, repave, fix the drainage, correct some parking. Uh, and so that will be very, very useful to all beaches residents and our, our visitors. Uh, capital improvements. Uh, aquatic gardens uh, has been a, a real struggle for us because we've had flooding uh, in the past, and even in the recent past, we've uh, continued to have flooding. Uh, it has taken us some time to amass the war chest to deal with that. We have several million dollars ready to go. Uh, as I think I heard uh, Mayor Hoffman mention earlier, uh, getting things bid, it, it, you know, we'll put out an RFP for a project with plenty of money and nobody, nobody bids. Uh, so that's a, a struggle, but getting the right bid uh, and getting uh, com uh, companies that are ready to mobilize and move on things, that's a challenge. But this is in the works. Uh, we are actually breaking that down. That uh, 
the aquatic gardens phase one and two, we're breaking that down into two bids right now. We'll be putting that back out uh, in the market. So uh, for any residents that uh, are in and around that area or no residents in that area, it is an absolute priority to solve the, the uh, flooding problems uh, in that segment of Atlantic Beach. Down our road, uh, I'm very, very pleased with that. That actually began under the former administration. Uh, and that was a complete rebuild of that segment of Donner Road uh, that runs all the way to Mayport Road. So, uh, multi-use uh, sidewalk, uh, rebuild of the uh, sewer infra infrastructure, uh, the street, uh, the uh, fencing, landscaping. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, completion. It took a while, uh, but the, the, another example of uh, our complete streets uh, programs and, and uh, proper uh, investment in infrastructure. Uh, our Publix Works building uh, is undergoing a significant renovation, uh, which will be completed this year, and it was uh, so timely. And, you know, it's funny what happens uh, when you open up the ceiling in a building that uh, it's an old building, and you find things that you didn't realize were there, uh, wiring issues and so on. So it's, uh, we're, we're doing some major uh, renovations on that uh, building. The, uh, the lifeguard station, I wish I could tell you more about that right now. We are. Uh, continuing with our uh, design build uh, uh, development of that building, it probably will not be completed until 2024. Uh, it, the costs are going up on that, uh, but we are right now waiting on our, uh, I believe it's the DEP uh, permit uh, for the coastal control line uh, approval uh, for the expansion of that building. Park progress, uh, back to our uh, master uh, plan for the uh, parks. Uh, this splash pad is under construction. That's at Donner Park. Uh, it's located where, uh, right adjacent to the uh, Gale Baker Center uh, where the uh, basketball courts uh, were previously. Uh, but that, that park also uh, will now host four additional pickleball courts. And Mayor Hoffman and I don't play pickleball either. Uh, but something is in the water around here because uh, the beaches are really into pickleball. Uh, so that will give us uh, eight pickleball courts uh, at Donner Park. Uh, and then finally, we, we started this last year when we had the, uh, the new um, um, high-speed um, infrastructure put in uh, in Atlantic Beach. But uh, all of our parks now have free Wi-Fi. So uh, Jack's Beach, Neptune Beach. You might want to take a page on that. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, complete streets. Um, I already spoke to the, uh, the, the stop committee, safety, safety traffic and parking. Uh, Main Street calming. Thank you for that note. Uh, Main Street calming. Uh, I, I was delighted uh, this uh, past Monday uh, to be in commission and be able to address the fact that we finally are moving forward with some traffic calming uh, that's been in the works now for a few years. Uh, so we're putting in speed tables on uh, uh, Main Street to uh, slow the traffic. Uh, we're removing a, uh, a uh, what do you call it, a, a traffic circle. Uh, not the same thing as what they're dealing with in uh, Jacksonville Beach with uh, roundabouts. Uh, this is just a, a little traffic circle, but it didn't do what we wanted it to do, and so we're listening to the residents. Uh, we're removing that. And so uh, thank goodness I'm not dealing with uh, with roundabout issues. And, and I'm not going to pick on my own. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I already mentioned the Abram Street improvements. Uh, the Levy, uh, Levy Road sidewalk was installed. Uh, so there you have it. Um, let's see. This one is one that is so uh, impactful to our community, and that's our partnership with the Boys and Girls Club uh, to oversee our after-school program. And uh, again, being a small city, trying to administer something like that, and I think about what it was like 30 years ago doing uh, services through Parks and Rec for after school and so on. It was a different time and age, and today, there's legal issues, there's background checks that need to be done, and then quite frankly, there is a sophistication of programming that comes when you partner with somebody that is seasoned in that space, like the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, so I'm delighted to say we've been in partnership for a number of months. Uh, it's going very well. They're running the after-school program. Uh, they're in partnership with Beaches Habitat uh, for Humanity, 
with regards to the tutoring portion, which Beaches Habitat has been running through both the Jordan uh, Center and the uh, and the Gale Baker Center um, for some number of years. So uh, you, you'll hear more about it over time, but uh, I have a meeting tomorrow to get my first major update on that. Uh, and uh, the, the, the early returns are good news for Atlantic Beach. And I think this kind of punctuates what's important to me, and that is good governance uh, and having, uh, having top talent running our city, good governance uh, in the decisions we make, uh, and putting and always thinking about risk because uh, one of the jobs of a leader uh, as a mayor is risk avoidance uh, and protecting the citizens of the city. Uh, so uh, we've already talked about beach renourishment. Thank you to Kevin Bodge and thank you for bringing that. Uh, let's see, planning, we're, uh, we're working on a number of plans. Uh, I'm not going to go into all of these. Let's move right to this. Looking ahead, uh, thank you. Uh, the Senate Bill 64, I, I don't know that, it, I don't think you mentioned anything on that. Uh, that's looming and the date of, for, the date for uh, implementation on that is 2032, so we've got, what is that, eight years to go. Uh, but what that is about, and all of you need to understand because it affects all of us in our coastal communities, that's about stopping the discharge of treated wastewater into the intercoastal and St. John's River. Okay, so that's where our treated wastewater goes today. I won't say that, and Kevin, you can probably object on this, but I won't say that's uh, drain water, but treated wastewater isn't real bad, but it's like that's environmentally unsound to do that. And if and when we have to comply with the requirements for the, uh, uh, the, uh, the EPA, it's in the tens of millions of dollars to solve that problem for just Atlantic Beach. Uh, last uh, I heard, it was probably $40 million uh, to produce a deep well injection system so that we're not discharging uh, into the river. And, uh, and so uh, we got time to deal with it. We'll see hear more from the legislature on, on that, uh, hopefully over the next, uh, in this session, if we have some discussion on it, uh, but we need to start paying attention uh, to that. Uh, finally, I'm going to finish up with, uh, you'll see the picture of, um, it's, home, what is it, not a home away, but almost home. Almost home. Uh, there's a building on First Street west of Mayport Road that is directly behind or adjacent to Veterans Memorial Park. And we are under contract to the city of Atlanta Beach to purchase that building as an additional community center to serve the needs of the residents in that part of the community. I'm delighted to announce this. I believe that transaction will be completed. Right now we're doing our due diligence uh, to hopefully close on it, and we're working hard to come up with a full plan on what we will do with that building, starting with a focus on veterans, uh, but uh, renovation and so on. So it'll be a new, new addition to the city of Atlanta Beach. And uh, I'll take questions later in the Q&A. Thank you.
but um, we did a video, and one of the youngest employees that we have is um, Ryan Vogel, and Ryan is the creator of this video. And what we wanted to do was kind of give you an idea of who works for Neptune Beach, what we're doing there, and let them tell you a little bit too. So we got a really cute video for you. I hope you enjoy it, and then I'd like to say a few words after that. You want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is our IT guy. Yeah, this is the smart guy that knows the right button. <laughs> Parking fee and new ordinance and fee resolution, and multiple land development code updates. 
Most of them are office of the the rigorous FEMA National Flood Insurance Program Community Rating System, a CRS five-year cycle visit. CRS program benefits Neptune Beach by providing reduced flood insurance rates, enhanced public awareness of flood hazards, improved flood hazard mitigation, and eligibility for federal assistance programs. This year, staff worked aggressively to exceed the CRS's federal and state minimum standards to improve our current Class 7 CRS rating. As a result of this hard work, staff expects an increase in Neptune Beach's CRS rating to further reduce the cost of flood insurance for property owners. Thank you for your time. Now, a few minutes with our department heads. <laughs> my pleasure to share with you the progress we've made in public works over the past year. I joined the city's team in March and can truly say it's been a quick nine months with many projects either completed or underway. Starting most importantly with our employees, we took a major step forward in workforce stability by boosting pay and benefits, a move that not only attracted quality candidates, but also filled vacancies, bringing us down to just one open position. Our dedication to serving our seniors, we recently finalized exterior upgrades to our new senior center. The grand opening for the community was a few weeks ago, and the response has been very favorable. At City Hall, we successfully replaced the roof, and now we're in the planning stages for an exterior makeover, which will include a fresh paint scheme. Significant advancement was made for our stormwater system. City Council approved the system-wide strategic plan, which was developed with feedback from the community regarding flooding issues. A hydraulic model of the system is being built, a key step that will strengthen grant funding requests. Operationally, we cleaned and televised large diameter pipelines in Bell Harbor, leading to rehabilitation work early in January 2024. And certainly not least, the City of Jacksonville awarded $8 million for capacity upgrades at Florida Boulevard and Hopkins Creek to alleviate flooding potential. For water and wastewater, we're nearing completion of the water tower renovation set to conclude this January. A fresh coat of paint, both inside and out, revitalizes the tower's appearance and ensures its functionality for years to come. Thinking about our potable water future, we are in design for a new potable water well, which will replace two wells first placed into service in the 1940s. At the wastewater reclamation facility, we initiated numerous equipment and operational projects, and bids for Plan 2 improvements are being evaluated. As we look forward to 2024, we're excited about additional public works projects, all aimed at further enhancing the services we provide to our residents. I'm Colin Moore, the Neptune Beach Parks and Sustainability Director, and I'm going to share with you some of the city's quality of life and resiliency initiatives over the past year. In April, this path became an official route of the East Coast Greenway, following FDOT's installation of a new hybrid pedestrian beacon in Crosswalk 1A1A. Now the park is safely connected to First Street, the most highly bike corridor in North Florida, with over 1,000 cyclists, runners, and walkers a day. Jumping over to the Atlantic Ocean, the city partnered with Butcher High School to install Green Beach Volleyball Nets, just north of C8 Avenue. We have also been refurbishing the youth baseball field in Jarbo Park. And in 2024, we'll install a bridge for a better connection to the playgrounds at Neptune House. Also in April, the city took part in the dedication of the Bull Memorial Preserve, a 200-acre donation to the North Florida Land Trust that will forever protect the fragile marsh and wetlands along Neptune Beach sections of the Intercoastal Waterway. Our primary resiliency effort of 2023 has been focused on replacing two undersized culverts on Hopkins Creek. In October, the City of Jacksonville budgeted $8 million towards this project. And in 2024, we anticipate closing out three federal and state grant funded projects. The Neptune Beach portion of the $32 million Duval County Shore Protection Project, a vulnerability assessment and adaptation plan, and new generators for City Hall and the police station. Constantly striving to find better ways to 
deliver exceptional law enforcement services. In 2023, I became Norman Police Chief, and since then, we've been busy rolling out new initiatives. One of my top priorities is to ensure transparency. In addition to obtaining grant funded in car camera and license plate readers, you'll hear more about in a moment. We have two new body work cameras, which will soon be implemented for testing and evaluation to field personnel. These cameras will allow officers to collect evidence, ensure accountability, and provide a two-dimensional recap of an incident. It's important to remember, however, body work cameras come with significant burden. Records request on average for every one minute of video, it takes 10 minutes of reaction time. Nevertheless, we remain committed to constantly improving and finding creative solutions to problems. The Neptune Beach Police Department was the first beaches agency to roll out a Narcan program, a type of opioid blocker delivered through nasal passages used to save victims of overdose or a fellow officer accidentally exposed to fentanyl. Since then, we have also obtained an injectable form called Zemi, which is a more concentrated and effective form of Narcan. Both these life-saving tools will help ensure we deliver exceptional public safety. 2023 was packed with community engagements, from Easter Bunny and Santa Rise through town, a Chiefs Walk, presentations at local schools, the holiday package program, cookies with a cop, and so many more. One of my top priorities is to ensure our ranks continue to be filled with talented and devoted public servants, ensuring that the future of Neptune Beach stays bright. To hear from some of those members, I'd like to introduce you to some of my staff. I'm Commander Gary Schneider, and I oversee the Operations Division of the Police Department. The Operations Division encompasses uniform patrol, special events, and withdrawal and emergency management. I'd like to share with you a few of our team's accomplishments for 2023. In 2023, through grant funding, the Police Department received remote license plate reader systems, or LPRs, that were installed in our police vehicles. These high-tech systems identify vehicles that have a nexus to criminal activity by merely coming in contact or close proximity of a police vehicle operating the system. In just a short time, our officers have made a multitude of drug, firearm, arrest, and seizures by using this cutting-edge technology. In 2023 was just another year of keeping our children and schools safe, which is a top priority of ours. Since the inception of Mayor Brown's School Safety Initiative in 2018, we have continued to improve the program each year. Through an agreement with Duval County Schools, our police officers are now contracted and paid to work off duty at Neptune Beach Elementary every school day from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. The interaction between the police and the students is absolutely remarkable. Also in 2023, police department handled 15 special events or large crowd events. We either staffed or planned uh, to include the Donna Marathon, the July 4th weekend, and dancing in the streets. These events are labor intensive and planning often takes months. Our goal is to make these events safe at all costs. We work very closely with our law enforcement partners to ensure that we have sufficient staffing and resources to make them safe for all. Good evening. My name is Liam Toll. And I'm the detective sergeant for the Criminal Investigations Division with the Neptune Beach Police Department. In the last seven months since I transitioned into this new role, our patrol officers, along with our detectives, have worked seamlessly together. And through that collaboration, the Neptune Beach Police Department has achieved some notable successes with many of our recent joint criminal investigations. In the seven month time frame I touched upon, the Neptune Beach Police Department has made 45 felony arrests which is an increase of 15% from both the previous two years. Additionally, I've also been tasked with our mobility management, or better known as the North Beaches Parking Program. In the past few months, we have addressed multiple shortcomings and deficiencies within the structure of the previous parking program's operational plan. One of the notable changes is the dissolution of the North Beaches Parking website. With the new accountability of this program underneath the police department's direction, the new parking website will fall under the city of Neptune Beach, this government website, which should provide an added level of confidence for all of our online users. This, a 
among several other shortcomings, are being evaluated and addressed in an effort to provide the best product and utmost customer service to both our residents and Beaches Town Center visitors. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to learn more about what your Neptune Beach Police Department is doing to better serve and protect the citizens and visitors of Neptune Beach. I'm beyond blessed to lead the dedicated, committed, and duty-bound members of this department who fulfill their duties daily with integrity, excellence, and honor, our core values. Maintaining these values allows us to enjoy the support of our community, something earned by decades of hard work, honesty, and devotion. And now back to Mayor Brown. Well, I think there should be some kind of 
rule passed and so that people know that they can't do this after a certain time. And it's New Year's Eve, maybe till midnight. Okay, I'll, I'll give them a break, but not to be in the morning. I got you. Okay, I have a second question. This is for Atlantic Beach. <laughs> I walk my dog every morning from my house. I walk two miles up through Atlantic Beach, turn around around uh, 18th Street, 16th Street, come back. I walk on the beach usually. And about once a month, my little puppy dog and I are attacked by bigger dogs that are off leash. That happened this morning. There were two people on the beach with big dogs. One was a German Shepherd, the other one was some blonde big dog. And we're walking along, me and my little mini schnauzer, and here come these two big dogs coming at us. And I'm yelling because now they're chasing my dog around me, the leash is wrapping around me, I just got over a broken shoulder, I didn't want to fall again. I yelled at the guy, come and get control of your dogs. And I said, there's a law in this city. You have to have your dogs under control on a leash. They can't be let loose playing on the beach. It just, there is no time of day that that's legal. The guy said, did my dog bite you, bitch? <laughs> and I said, excuse me? And he said it louder. Did my dog bite you, bitch? <laughs> so I got out my phone and I took a picture of him. And I have a picture. Okay. Okay. You'll see it. Pass it around. And I'm sure it's so, so I'm going to address that because we actually have had uh, numerous. Uh, oh, no, hold it up. Okay. Okay. We've had numerous issues uh, over the last few years. It's not okay. Okay. We have. Uh, do you know this gentleman? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a dog, so I don't walk by a dog, but uh, it's, it's not okay. This dog is still on a leash. Can you pass it around? Can you pass it around? You have to kiss it. I'm going to kiss the mic. It's a good thing I've done with a couple of heavy games. So, look, uh, I would just encourage you to, to contact the police department and animal patrol, and they will take care of that uh, if, if you can give them any information to be able to be uh, uh, But this is an issue that all of us should be concerned at the beach, is control of animals, uh, and more importantly, is it, it's bad enough that a dog might be killed or, or injured by another dog, but children and, and elderly people in particular, and I know people in my community, so it's not okay, and uh, I would always vigorously uh, uh, defend the right of a citizen to uh, make the complaint. By the way, in our city, and I don't know if it's the same in the other cities, you have to make that first complaint to basically start the process. So if there is a dog that's uh, out of control and bites a, uh, another animal or a, a human, uh, and you don't make that complaint, you are hurting the next victim because before the city can really do anything to rein that in, uh, there has to be a first incident. This question was not addressed to me, but again, that's never stopped me from interjecting. Um, <laughs> for both of those examples, those, we can't legislate people caring about each other. We cannot legislate neighbors being courteous to neighbors. I wish that we could, because we would all do it in a minute. So, so what we can do is tell you, in both cases, Please call the police. Um, they want you to call them. Don't call 911 unless it is truly an emergency, but call them because there's been things that have happened. We've had some kind of smash and grab things down in um, South Jack's Beach, and our police never got a call. But somehow there was a video posted on Facebook. So someone who had a phone saw it. Why they didn't make the call, I don't know. So. So we're not monitoring Facebook necessarily. We're not hearing your the driveway conversations. Call the police so they can make a record of it so that they know. And the fireworks are an ongoing problem. Anybody with dog, we are all dealing with that. So again, we can't force each other to care about each other, unfortunately.
Thank you. And I want to say one other thing. It is always the few people that make it so much harder for the good people that follow the rules. And we see that all of the time. We'll see all the stuff we have in this poor woman, you know, was out there with her little dog, and she could have been attacked. Who knows? She know could have attacked her dog. But, you know, we do have the rules. They are in place. And hopefully, if you can, you can just call the police as fast as you can. Thank you. Next question. I feel like this one's going to be for me. Well, I didn't object. Beaches. It's, <laughs> it's really for all the beaches, okay. but it's mostly for you. The beaches is the playground for Duval County and beyond. We're not getting the best deal from Duval County for a long time in how the taxes are appropriated back to us. Is any progress being made there that we get a little bigger percentage? We were talking about the dune walkovers. That should all be funded by the city. So when it's not federally funded, the county yeah. does pay for the difference for that. So our, the local beaches municipalities are not paying for the beach nourishment. No, 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 I'm talking about the walkovers. Oh, the walkovers, yeah. Um, we do get some funding for like the lifeguard services and things like that. Um, we each have an interlocal agreement and each of us have separate arrangements with the city in terms of funding and, and what is kind of included in that agreement. I think at this point, Jacksonville Beach is continuing to look for opportunities to make sure those tax dollars come back to us. Penman Road is a county road. Second Avenue, which I talked about with the boat ramp, is a county road. So those are the places where we're going to see some significant capital investments from the county. So keeping on making sure those projects are funded and, and completed by the county is important to me. And I, a way to bring I, back this tax I talked to the police chiefs. 80% of the calls for service are for people that don't live there. So, you know, we need to get a little bit more back from Duval County because we supply, we're the cash cow. We supply the bulk of the money to the county and we get a smaller percentage back. Thank you. Are you, are you prepared to go downtown and advocate for us? <laughs> sure. Uh, let me just say on behalf of Atlantic Beach, I agree with this gentleman. Uh, we are in a conversation uh, with the Deacon administration and ultimately with the city of Jacksonville. City Council, uh, and we are looking at the interlocal agreement. To, I'm not going to give you dates and what's going on yet, but uh, the, the next time I speak on this issue, I'll give you more uh, detail. This will happen in, in Atlantic Beach this year. Uh, we are also looking at the interlocal agreement. We're pleased to get our $8 million this year, and hopefully our $7 million this year, and last year and this year, and we do feel the same way that you do. You know, not getting our share, and we are talking to them, but I'm telling you something. I think it could be very civilized, and I think that we can negotiate, and that's what we're looking to do. Absolutely. We noticed while you were talking, though, that Hopkins Creek drains all, that stormwater's from all of our city, so we're all we're taking yeah. credit for that, too. So. <laughs> I just want to comment about Hopkins Creek, because if you're not aware, I mentioned earlier in my presentation about the aquatic gardens, uh, stormwater issues. Flooding, and that's all about Hopkins Creek. So thank you, Mayor, for getting the uh, downstream. What would that mean, the downstream? Because I'm upstream, and I need to get through your downstream. So thank you. <laughs> We're in the middle of both Jacks Beach and Atlantic Beach, drain into the same area. So Hopkins Creek is crucial to all of us. I just have a suggestion, maybe slash a question for all three of you. I noticed St. John's County offers, after the Christmas holidays, a couple of locations where you can bring your live Christmas trees and wreaths and leave them and they will be mulched and then you, you know, maybe the mulch in Clayton County, you know, parks or citizens can use it. I would just like to know why we don't have a program like that out here at the beaches. Because I don't know what to do with my tree. Um, I mean, I thought you know, if you put it on the curb. Do not put it on the dunes. No. Do you know that? I know that um, used to be, but not anymore. Right. It probably never was a good idea. We also buried old cars. I know. <laughs> That's why it would be great to have a central location for all the beaches to bring trees. Does so anybody still have their tree up? Do you still have my trees? Um, Patty Shack Ranch takes them. Yeah. Patty Shack will take them. So I, that's an interesting. I don't. I don't. I don't know what the logistics of that would be, but that's an interesting. Well, thing. I would like to find out about that. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you. Uh oh. <laughs>
So they'll be seeing it, the whole presentation, and it will be really focused on Hampton Beach, and I urge you to be there. Is this new, what the, a new updated plan, or the same one they're showing? Yeah, we have not had one presentation to the full council. Yeah. But we're looking forward so there hasn't been a public meeting? I mean, the public there hasn't been anything at your, at your place that the city, that the city council has seen? No, the city council has There's no oh, event. So there no there's been no public meeting. The meeting. There's been no public meeting from Neptune Beach. No. We okay. have, okay. This has been because I'm, the only reason I'm making clarity is because yeah. the Jacksonville Beach resolution said that there was a public meeting in Neptune yeah. Beach. That was actually so a staff it. meeting that was held, and we put it up there because the public is always invited.
the seas and coasts starting back in uh, pre-World War II days. And so our concern is we're uh, screening out uh, what's called uh, NEC, um, some abbreviation from the corporate way, that is taken for potentially explosive items. So all of the material that is uh, pumped out of the beach uh, has got to be screened. We, we've been doing this actually for, for a long time. Now it needs to be not only screened, but, uh, but explored and investigated specifically by munitions experts to make sure that there's no uh, you know, shells or unexploded uh, ordnance. A big problem in the Northeast, not so much a problem before. But as a result of doing all that screening, you get all these shells that are left. Depending on the particular project at hand, sometimes we return them. We're doing a new project in Brevard County right now. After we look at each screen basket, uh, all the shells go back into the surf zone. Uh, and every project is a bit different in, in Milano. Uh, some of that material uh, was removed from the beach, which, which is not uh, atypical. I will say that the concern for the benthic organisms is my, personally, I'm more interested in keeping the shells on the beach. The benthic organisms are going to die, in one case, uh, or not anyway. Um, in the case of the Duval project, uh, we have very, um, the amount of shell that's removed through the screening process is actually very, very small, on, on the order of less than 0.001% of the amount of material that's pumped out of the beach. Most of that material will be, be returned back into the surf zone, if there's any suspicion that there's a contaminant in it, then it'll be removed from the beach. But it's a very, very, very small percentage of the, um, of, of the overall material. But again, every project is a little bit different. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Who had unexploded munitions on there? You just watched me go Yeah. I did not see that coming. Okay. Well, we've come to the end of our presentation. Let's give a round of applause for us. Dates. Um, and our last request is for those of you who are physically able, if you can help us stack the chairs, it will make our getaway much quicker. Thank you, and we'll see you next month.